Hello folks, we're now doing the Logan Bay wine making. This is the video one, part one. And uh, we've got Nigel here, eager to give us a little chat about it. So I'm going to pass you on to him. Okay, uh, Logan Bay wine. Um, well, I think the first thing I want to ask is, in a wine, there are three important flavors that have got to be in balance. And I'm going to see if Julie can remember what any of them are. Oh dear, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, I'll tell you. I'll tell you what one of them is. <laughs> All right, tartness. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Can you re re think of any of the others? Oh, God. No, I really am. I'm hopeless. Okay. Well, the three, the three types of, of flavour that we have to have in balance in a wine are sugar, which gives sweetness. Yeah. Um, acid, which gives tartness. Right. And then tannin, which gives bitterness. Okay. And you remember, if, if you may have seen that before, Julie. There we go. Okay. And that's what we're aiming for when we're trying to make a wine. We want the mixture that we mix up to be sweet and refreshing. That's if we're making a sweet wine. If we're making a dry wine, of course, we just want it to be refreshing. Um, we want it to be slightly tart because all decent wines have got a certain degree of sharpness in them. Okay. And then we want a slight bitterness, because if you don't have any bitterness in a, a wine, it, it lacks body and it tastes like, well, alco pop or... Um, it doesn't taste like a wine. It's alcoholic, okay. but it doesn't taste right. Right. So, uh, what we're going to do today with Loganbury... Now, Loganbury is a very, very good fruit. These are frozen Loganberries, which Julie has grown. Cover them over with a, a towel so that they didn't all thaw out. But Loganberries are very good for winemaking because they have the three flavours, sweetness, tartness and bitterness, in about the same proportion as we find in grapes. Okay. And as you remember, grapes are the ideal fruit. And Loganberries, the balance is almost exactly the same. So Loganberries don't require any other fruit when you make up your mixture for fermentation. Okay. I should state that we've already weighed these and we've got Yeah, we've got four about pounds. four pounds. So you remember the basic recipe that we... For one gallon. For one gallon is four pounds of fruit uh, between about two and a quarter and three and a quarter pounds of sugar per gallon of eventual wine and between half a pound and one pound of sultanas. If you put the larger amount of sultanas in, you get a, a wine that's a little bit richer and a little bit less fruity. So it just depends what you want. If you're making a white wine, this is obviously going to be a, a red wine. It usually turns out about crimson, though it's about 10 years since I've made it. But if you make a white wine, that that's one where you don't have quite so many sultanas because you don't want to overpower the, uh, the delicate flavour of a white wine with the, uh, the caramel taste okay. that you get from, from sultanas. Okay, uh, I'm going to have to put in some water. I'm going to put in about five pints to begin with, so I'll just go and locate that. I hope I'm not encouraging you all to become alcoholics there or watching this. <laughs> Here he is, he's back. There we go. Now I don't drink a great deal of wine. A lot of this gets given away. Is it given or do you use it as a barter for something else from well, other people? Well, barter's yeah. quite useful. Yeah. So that's five pints. I don't know how much liquid is going to come out of the fruit, so I don't want to add too much liquid. If I add eight pints, which is a gallon, and I get a pint coming out of the fruit, I'm, I'm in trouble because we've got yeah. a more dilute mixture. So I can okay. always add more, but what I shall do is um, eventually, well, have I got a mark on here saying one gallon? Oh, there we are. Very useful to mark your equipment. And then when I've taken all the fruit debris out in a week or two, 
um, I shall top that up with water to uh, to one gallon. Okay. Okay. Now we need some sultanas. So sultanas is always one of the key ingredients for, you, for you, the way you make wine. Well, yeah? well, yes, there are other possibilities, but sultanas are jolly good. What other, uh, what other possibilities is there instead of sultanas? Um, you can use raisins or currants. Uh, raisins tend to have a very strong flavour, so I wouldn't recommend using them unless you have a, a strong flavoured fruit to go with them. Yeah. So you could use raisins if you were making, say, um, elderberry wine. Elderberry okay. wine is, is fairly bitter and very strong flavour, and that will help to smooth it out yeah. if you've got raisins. And just remind us what raisins basically are. Well, raisins uh, tend to be um, dried red grapes. I think they are seedless. And they are a particular type, though I would have to go onto the, inter onto the internet to find out what the variety was. Okay. And, and currants uh, are even stronger flavour. I think they're Greek, and they're very tiny, seedless, um, black or dark red grapes. Okay, thanks for that. But the, the darker the, the dried fruit, the more sort of caramelly taste you get. Right. Uh, that, I've just weighed out eight ounces there of sultana, so they go in, straight from the packet. Uh, now we'll go with a little bit of stir. Do we have to put some sugar in? Yes, we need the sugar as well. Yeah. yeah. Okay. See, I'm getting good at this. Yeah, how much sugar do you think we're going to put in, Julie? Do we put all the sugar in at once? No. No, we don't. Excellent. Now, usually with sugar, if you put in um, Two and, a quarter, uh, two and a quarter pounds of sugar per gallon, that will generally give you a dry wine. If you put in three and a quarter, that tends to be sweet, and then you've got a sort of spectrum between. It's not always two and a quarter, three and a quarter, it depends on the fruit, but that's a, a rough guide. Okay. So it's usually safe to put in, well, I'm going to put in a pound today, and then I'll put in a pound and a quarter in a day or two's time, and then I shall leave it a few days, then I shall take the skins out, and then taste it and see where to go from there. Right, okay. Right, let's get the sugar. I hope you're all enjoying these wine making videos, what yeah. we're doing. Yeah, I've been finding it fascinating. Oh, yeah, they're quite fun to do. Yeah. It takes a little bit of um, getting used to having a camera. Point it does, out. doesn't it? It, yeah, it? it feels funny, but uh, I'm getting used to it gradually. And if you're shy like me, you know, it's... Now, there is a, a, a way of measuring out fairly accurately from a pack like this. I can usually get this within about an ounce. So that's two and a quarter pounds. So I go halfway down. And then I'm going to take out one pound. So I'm, I move my fingers up about three millimetres and I'm just going to tip it in. This is what, years of experience? And that's about it. I used to be a chemist so I can judge quantities fairly accurately. So that should, have, should be about a pound within an ounce or so. Now I'm breaking up the lumps of fruit. They're frozen solid, remember. Put them breaking up nicely. And then we need a little bit of yeast. So I'll go and get one of my other okay. brews from the kitchen. And while we're doing this Logan Bay wine, I should state that uh, I've got three uh, bushes on my plot and we've had that many that I've had to give up on picking. Um, we've had, I think, around 25 pound has gone in the freezer um, and then we've had maybe 35 pound of raspberries and the same's happened there that would give up yeah this is the first time i've ever well first time for 10 years i've managed to make loganberry wine because i've not had access to any loganberries well right, this is this is cider you can see i started this from unripe apples the other day and it's fizzing lovely like that that's really good so i'm going to take out a, mi a bit of a mixture and so this is the yeast? This is the yeast. Okay. Yep. So I am learning a little. I remember that from the other video. Yeah, yeah I, I don't actually buy yeast anymore. I, I bought some yeast back in 1987 
and I've kept all of the the, um, the brews going since then by just transferring from one vessel to another. It was originally a Sauterne yeast. What it is now, I've no idea. It's probably changed a little bit in the 25 odd years that I've been doing the winemaking. Okay, so that's the first part done. Now, what's the other thing? Before we clear everything away, what do I have to do? Label. Correct. Have to put the quantities down. What's yes. gone in there? Nigel has already put the clean labels on earlier. Sorry about the tractor that just went by. It's one of the so pit pulls that have been in the country. That's right. So Logan Brew, what was that? Four pounds. Sugar, we've got one pound. And Sultanas, half a pound. And yeast has been added. And this is for one gallon of wine. Yeah. And water, five pints. We've, just, de we've decided that for future videos we're going to stick with the one gallon for filming. We might be making more, but it won't be. Um, yeah, I think on it might video. be. It'll be more straightforward. Straightforward, yeah. So they know some the people don't yeah. want to have two gallons straight away, do they? No, that's especially true. if especially if it goes wrong for them. Oh yeah, that's that's right. And if you do two gallons, if you're a newcomer to it, I recommend you don't do a two gallon batch. Do two separate gallons, okay. and then you could, for example, put a couple of bananas in one of the batches and, and leave the other one as it is, and you'll have two distinct wines that are different, okay. which, which is more interesting than just doing one batch. Well, that's good, yeah, good, yeah. good point. Okay, okay I think that's it. Okay, then. thanks a lot, Nigel. Thanks. Bye. Bye-bye.